Sean Catau, I'm from Boston, or outside Boston. Um, I did my undergrad here at Hopkins as well in chemical and biomolecular engineering and stayed on with Dr. Wirtz for a PhD. As we're taught in high school and all of our cell biological textbooks, uh, the nucleus, people have always said that the nucleus is a, is a ball. The cell is flat and the nucleus sits in the middle, kind of like a beach ball. Uh, in reality, it's more like a disc. It's very flat. The cell here in the corner has uh, this paranuclear actin cap, which is a structure that drapes over the top of the nucleus uh, like a blanket on top of a pillow in the middle of your bed maybe um, and it sort of restricts the height and it helps control the shape of the nucleus. This is a wild type uh, mouse embryonic fibroblast so a normal cell plated on glass and we're looking at a rotation a 3D image of it and you can uh, sort of see the bulging where the nucleus should be in the middle and that actin is aligned stress fibers on top that's the actin cap uh, covering the nucleus like a blanket. So here we have disease cells. This is a model for muscular dystrophy and we found that uh, these cells do not express an actin cap. You can see that there's, they're lacking that third dimension where the actin cap should be and the nucleus is in the middle. Um, it's not stained for in this picture but if it were there you would imagine that it would be much much larger or taller than it would be in a, in a wild type cell. And uh, we're looking into this as a possible uh, tool for diagnosing different sorts of diseases like cancer um, because we have seen that those cells do not have actin caps and if we were able to pattern them and immediately tell it might be a more reliable tool than those that currently exist.